where you are right now is you're in the New Mexico state capital. Actually, one of the newest state capitals in, in the country. Um, we're actually sort of famous because we have both the oldest capital in the country and we have one of the newest capitals. The Zia sun symbol is often cited as, as one of the inspirations for the development of this building, of the state, state capital. And as you can see here in, in the rotunda, we have the state seal, which is within the Zia sun sign. And it has the four parts off each piece, I mean, off, off, off the circle. There are four entrances on the capital, which also tie to the Zia sun sign. And the floor, as you can see, we have the four parts which represent the four directions, the four seasons, the four winds, and the four stages of life. And all of that tracks here on the floor of the, of the capital ro rotunda. The cultures that have been primary in New Mexico have been the, the Native American, Pueblo, Navajo, Apache, the Spanish, and the Anglo. They are reflected in this building. The art reflects a wide range of of Hispanic art, Native American art, Anglo, cowboy, whatever, all of that's reflected here. And I think this building has finally come together. I think it represents all of the ethnicities that live here, all of the people who've come, who've struggled, who've worked. I think it represents all of, all of New, New Mexico, all of, the, all of the various participants and citizens. I think the legislature recognized when we renovated this, this, this building, which we did in 89-91, how important art is to this state and how important it is to reflect the artistic endeavors of the citizenry, of the whole mix of, of citizenry. And we have a wide variety. And as we go around the, the building, you'll, you'll see that. We are now on the third floor of the state capitol. Now, this is the floor where all the committees are. And this is where a lot of the art is. Uh, we've got a wonderful, this first piece is a Rob Raccoon who did this egg tempera. And it's just really fun because it goes all the way across New Mexico and it shows all the different parts and places in a very sort of stylized version. The next piece that, well, this was one of our first donations. And this was, this is a, by Charlie Car Carrillo who's a noted santero. Um, and a santero is a, a saint carver. And this is a wonderful piece that was donated to the, to, the, to the collection. This is the piece that the kids love the most. This is Holly Hughes' Buffalo. All of it is made up with materials from landfills. And as you get closer, you can actually see the, the old spoons, film, old paint brushes, uh, battery caps. I mean, it's just a wonderful piece and it's on long-term loan, and she is just, she's wonderful, but the kids just love this. And I, you know, the significance is just what you can do with, with refuse, I think is her, it was, was, was her point. It's just, well, you can make art out of anything. And she has made a wonderful piece that everybody loves. This actually was one of the first pieces, was part of the original 11 or 12 that was commissioned. This is a, by Frederico V. Hill. It is a fresco, and it basically reflects Santa Fe Plaza around the 1800s. And he is a well-known artist. His family is a long, you know, they're generation-old uh, Hispanics from, from Santa Fe. You could not have, a, have a, a, an art collection from New Mexico that did not have religious art, because the religious art makes up a lot of the art in, in New Mexico. This, for example, is an altar screen by R Ramon Jose Lopez. This actually was part of the struggle of this collection and of getting all of the art up and in, into the capital, because originally we were waiting for, this Gary, for the Gary Niblett piece, which is here, to be finished. And so in the meantime, because we had this and we didn't have this yet, we put this piece up here. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people thought that that was a bad idea. They thought that it, it made it feel like this was celebrating Catholicism and that this was way too religious. And the ACLU met with us and said, we want you to take it down. And so we explained that we were planning on putting it with other 
northern New Mexico crafts and art, and that we would remove it temporarily. We would not take it out of the building because you cannot have a capital art collection in New Mexico that does not have religious art. So we did move that at their request and ended up putting it here with a number with a lot of northern New Mexican art. We don't have a state religion in this state either. However, we do have artists that reflect the various artistic traditions, and some of those are very, are very spiritual. Right now, we are in the New Mexico State Governor's Office, which is on the fourth floor of the state capitol. What I find particularly wonderful is, is the wonderful desk and credenza, which were part of a solicitation of art for the capital. And Patrick Trujillo, who grew up in Santa Fe, was the young man who won the contest to design and build the governor's desk and credenza. And the nice little piece of that, which, I mean, we didn't select it, but the, the group that was doing all the furniture piece selection picked him. And later we told them that his mother worked for the Legislative Council Service for 30 years. And so it was a wonderful thing for us that little Patrick grew up to be able to, to, to make this absolutely gorgeous desk. And it's also gorgeous because it's so reflective of the three cultures in New Mexico, the Native American, the Hispanic, and the, and the Anglo. And they're around the different desks, around the, the sides, it reflects different pieces. We've got the Santuario on one side, we've got Carlsbad Caverns on, on, on the other. And then the credenza, I don't know if, if you can see the credenza in back, but each panel is, is, a, is a, a flower or a plant from New Mexico that's been hand carved. And I think that's one of the things I think is most special about this office is where the desk and the credenza came from and the love with which it was made. Where you are now is in the Senate chamber. I know some people think that there's a lot of fighting and a lot of, you know, disagreement. I always like to remind people that um, we're not like the Israeli Knesset. We don't, it's not a brawl, and we don't scream at the prime minister like the British do in the House of Commons, but it does have a slightly rough and tumble character some, sometimes, and, and that sort of adds to its charm. Uh, in the old days, they would do lots of disagreement, and then they'd go have a drink or, or, or dinner. Um, they do that some now, but it's a little less congenial than it used to, to be. I think just sort of the national extreme partisanship, it does start filtering down to the various states and it has finally reached New Mexico a little bit. And I think that's an unfortunate thing in terms of the legislative process because the legislative process is about compromise. It's about everybody coming together to solve problems. And so you really need to be able to sit down and work things out and give, you know, one side, everybody has to give a, a little sometimes to make things, things work and that's uh, part of the process. The tug of war outside, which is a sculpture done by Glenna Goodacre of five children in a tug of, tug of war, that piece was one of the original pieces that we bought, that the legislature bought. Um, and I think they wanted that piece because it was so reflective of, of the work they do on behalf of children and the the children, you know, children and education in this state. I think it's also, given that the name was Tug of War, I think it's a, also a, a good expression about sometimes what happens in this building, which is it does get to be a bit of a tug of war as people try to figure out what we're going to do on what issue.